What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer. And as always, 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 it is an honor and it is a privilege to be here sharing time with my fellow brothers, supporting one another and rising with more passion, with more power and more purpose. And if you've been on one of my podcasts or one of my lives, you've seen me on Instagram, you've seen me on YouTube, you've seen me on Facebook, you've seen me on LinkedIn, then you'll know that we are a brotherhood that is supporting fellow man in showing the real version of who he is to the world. We are here to help each other rise. We are not here to hold each other down. We are here to hold one another accountable to our true, authentic, most congruent, most coherent, most aligned self to bring that version of you, your true potential to the world. And it takes a lot of courage for a man to build another man up as opposed to tearing and keeping him down. And we are here to support each other in evolving our frequency, our vibration, our resonance, growing our consciousness so we could be of greater contribution to the world, to our family, to our friends. That's what it's all about. That's what Man on Fire is all about. So welcome. If it's your first time being with me, it's an honor to have you aboard. So today we are going to dive. I listened to this guy in uh, the crypto world, cryptocurrency world. He goes, let's dive right in. So let's dive right in to today's topic, which is where in your life are you Yes, you being inauthentic and pretending. So what do I really mean by this question? What do I mean by this question? I'm asking, are you present as a man? Are you present to where you are not really showing up as the real you? You are not showing up where there's not a mask that you're wearing or there's not a costume that you have on, or there's not an act that you're playing in this show called your life. Where in your life are you operating as a version of you that you know is not really congruent with the real authentic version of yourself? Where in your life are you pretending to be somebody that you're not? Is it in your marriage? Is it, is it in your work life? Is it your relationship with your children? Is it how you show up with your friends? Is it how you show up with your coworkers? Is it show, how you show up as a company owner? Are you not being the real authentic you as it relates to your pursuit of your mission and your purpose? Where are you showing up, said differently, as an imposter, where you act one way in one environment and then you act another way in another environment. Where are you doing this where you know if you were to look into the mirror and be honest with yourself, you'd feel some degree of feeling like a fake or feeling a, like a phony or feeling fraudulent as opposed to feeling authentic and loving the image that's looking back at you where you see this beautiful smile. And this is simply a call to action to take honest inventory and an honest reflection on where are you really at in your life? Have you ever met the real version of yourself? You remember that little boy who had the purity, who had the innocence, who still had the playful spirit, who still had the spark in his eyes, that twinkle. And for any of you that have children, you can see it in their eyes. Age two, three, four, five, six, and then something happens. Something happens where all of a sudden your little girl or your little boy, you could see that the innocence is not fully there anymore. And the world and its cruelty starts to take over and the nurturing, which may have meant well, but whether it's through a religion or whether it's through school or whether it's through parenting or groups of friends that you hang out with, next thing you know, the authenticity of who you are the true nature of your beingness, the very essence of who you are is no longer celebrated in its full expression. And you get stuffed down and your emotions get pushed down and your spiritual fascination and imagination and dreaming of the world 
gets pushed down and you're told how to think and how to behave and what to believe and you're confined inside of this box almost like a coffin but you're still alive and now you're living as an inauthentic version of yourself because you have this version of you that is your nature like who God made you to be right if you were given up for adoption when you were an infant would you still be the same you if you grew up in China as opposed to Africa as opposed to the United States would you still be you would you think differently would you behave differently would you have a different religion would you be into different sports see all of those things are not the real you those are things that the culture encultured us into and told us how to be and put us inside this box where we bent our own rhythm and we lost more of who we are but our true nature regardless if you grew up in a different country regardless if you were given up for adoption ultimately your true nature has the ability to prevail just like you've seen a blade of grass make its way through concrete solid concrete and find its way back to the light and this is what it's all about in your quest in your journey of being a man of fire is finding your way back to the light the light of remembrance of who you are the light of remembrance of who God made you to be here on earth the gifts that you're here to bring the world, all those hurts and wounds and traumas and transforming them into fuel to give and serve more powerfully. But most of us, and I could say that this was true for me up until uh, my early 40s, I was not really being authentic. I was more in pretending mode. I had a deep desire to want to be liked. I wanted people to like me and to care about me and to think I'm cool to think he's a good guy and I compensated for my inadequacies I compensated for my feelings of unworthiness from my own unique traumas as a little boy from age five where I thought that I was the reason that my dog died because he died while I was playing with him or age nine when I was struck under my left eye by a golf club and I was blind for over three weeks and I asked my parents if they could love me with one eye. We have all had these hurts and these traumas and these wounds. And many of us, if not all of us, have compensated. Compensated to try to get away from feeling like we're not good enough and we've taken on an act. We've put on masks. Maybe for some of you it's the pleaser. right? I taught all about this in one of my workshops which you can still have access to it's called reclaim her heart and within that workshop I was teaching men how to restore the intimacy and the trust and the communication and the love in a relationship no matter where it's at and part of the teaching I went into how as a man we have all of these masks that we wear we play many actors in this show in this play that we call our life and so it's important that we take a look at, well, where am I being inauthentic? So for me, it was more like the pleaser. It was more like the yes man. Or perhaps turning your partner into your mom where you're constantly seeking approval or you're walking around timid and you have so much codependency and you have this nervous, skittish uh, vibration to you where you're walking on eggshells you're walking on the broken glass and you're constantly looking for her approval. So where in your life are you being inauthentic? Are you not being the real you? Where have you given away your power? Where have you abdicated your leadership? Where are you operating from a place of wanting to be liked as opposed to deeply respecting yourself and commanding and earning respect? Not demanding, but commanding meaning it's coming from an authentic place. Where in your life, through honest inventory, are you really aware that you're being inauthentic? You know, and it reminds me of an example. About six years ago, we had a brother in our community where, when I say our community, Man on Fire has many different entry points of how you can find your way into our brotherhood. We have free platforms on social media. Perhaps you're hearing me on the podcast or on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram or on LinkedIn, 
But then we have coaching programs, and then we have programs where you come to a live event, and you come to our signature event called the Four Day Immersion. So we had this gentleman come to one of our Four Day Immersions, and literally, it was uh, a couple weeks prior to that that he attempted to take his own life. And by the grace of God, luckily, he passed out before he lost his life. And what he revealed to us at the program, and this is what comes up for some men when they come to these four-day immersions, we create this beautiful, sacred space for man to just be so raw and so vulnerable where he can share so openly and transparently and not feel judged, but he could feel loved. And, and our whole motto is, we will love you back to the remembrance of who you are, right? Because most of us have forgotten. We forgot how magnificent we are. We forgot how extraordinary and phenomenal we are. And we're all, to some degree, living with some form of shame and guilt and unworthiness. And then we go and we either live a life of victimhood or of blame, or even worse, we live a life of complacency, neutrality, bland, unique, ordinary, fair, good, okay. It's not why we're here, you all know that. We're here to live an extraordinary and phenomenal life, to really soak up this experience of being human and have an incredible experience where we feel connected with everything and everyone, including God. So what ended up happening is what this gentleman shared with us is that he had, uh, he had a beautiful wife. He had three beautiful daughters. He was the president of um, his company. He was crushing it as a living. He had a summer house, a winter house, all the fancy cars, all the fancy watches. Everyone idolized him. Everyone looked up to him. Everyone loved him. Everyone said, why can't you be more like him? He had it all. He married his high school sweetheart. What more could he possibly have or want? So how is it that this man wanted to take his own life? And the answer is because he was being inauthentic and pretending to be somebody where he was actually not that person or not being that person. So let me explain what I mean. Well, it turns out, and the reason that he wanted to take his own life is that he was having an affair behind his wife's back and he got caught. And now, this perfect man that his daughters saw as perfect, his wife saw as perfect, friends and family saw him as perfect, the church saw him as perfect, his company saw him as perfect, everyone should be more like him. Now all of a sudden in these areas of his life where he had been pretending because he was withholding a truth, he's showing up as being inauthentic because he's hiding a secret. And when you hide a secret, you hide a part of you, your light diminishes, it dims. The real you, the real you in the fullness of your glory, in the fullness of your radiance and magnificence starts to get dimmed as you build up these lies and these withholds because you're terrified that if I were to reveal this, if I were to share this with people, they'll change how they're seeing me. And if they change how they're seeing me, they might cut me out of their life and they might make me feel unworthy and unlovable. So rather than risk people changing the image of how they see me that I've gone to great lengths to create, rather than revealing to them a secret, a part of me where I visited the darkness, and now it's time for me to find my way back to light, rather than chance that I'm just gonna live inauthentically, but the truth is, that when you're living from a space of inauthenticity, when you're pretending, the vibration that you're giving off starts to change and ultimately it will catch up with you. We can't keep pushing down the secrets. And what I've learned, by the way, in coaching men for over nine years now, really over 25 years, but specifically with Man on Fire, is that number one, there are so many men that would say, They've done things and they were hell-bent. They would have sworn that I'll take this to the grave with me. I'm not, I'm not telling anybody this. I, 
There's no way I'm revealing this secret, this secret. And, and why? Why? Because they believe that if I were to tell the truth, people will withdraw their love from me. And I'm not willing to risk that. But what you can't see is that by you not revealing the truth, you're pushing them away inadvertently. So because we have pirates, if you've listened to any of my content out there, we have pirates that take over our ship in the mind, right? You, you've, heard, you've heard the expression, get in your head, you're dead, or analysis, paralysis. We all know that we have this voice in our head, the ego, that's fighting for its dear life and it gets you to do crazy things like have an affair, go to you know, massage parlors and do things behind your wife's back or eat food that's not healthy for you or sabotage your success at work push people out of your life. We have this crazy voice in our head that we believe is us and next thing you know, we're following this voice and it's not the real us, it's the pirates that have taken over the ship. So we have to take back conscious control of our mind, conscious control of the thoughts where we become the captain of our own ship again. So can you imagine that this man who came to our immersion, his pirates in his mind literally told him, here's the solution. Take your life, because that's the easier path than coming clean and facing your wife and facing your family and facing your church and facing the people at your company. The better solution is to take your life, and the good news is you have a great insurance policy, life insurance policy, so your family will be well off. I mean, this is the insanity. Insane. It's in our head. It's not us. It's not God. It's not spirit or soul or source. It's the pirates. We call them the pirates in the man on fire world. It's that voice in the head that wants to wreck you, ruin you, get you to do crazy stuff, where you take an impulse into an action and you're like, why did I do that? And that's part of being a man on fire is you learn to take back conscious control of your actions and of your thoughts in your life, where you're operating from a heart center. Now, the good news about this story that I'm sharing with you guys is that this gentleman ended up taking full ownership of what he did. He did the dirty work and dove into the center of what was behind the root of his actions and dove into his own feelings of being unworthy and unlovable and really got to the source of it and started doing the healing to the point where he truly learned to love himself again. And wouldn't you know it, his wife being an amazing woman, just a beautiful, beautiful, sacred being, was able to open her heart to him again. The family welcomed him back and he lost no love. In fact, people loved him more because my God, the courage to come clean. Because, you know, we don't throw stones or bricks in a glass house, right? It's so easy to judge another person. But the reality is when we have disdain or judgment towards somebody else, Really, what we're doing is we're temporarily excusing ourselves from having to look at ourselves. And as long as I could judge somebody else, I don't have to look at me. See, I'm clean and you're dirty. I'm good and you're bad. I'm right and you're wrong. No. When you have a charge, when you have a polarity towards something that someone else did, what you can't see in that moment is that it has more to do with you not taking ownership of parts of you you're not proud of. That's another discussion for another day. But for today, the question was, where are you? in your own life, being inauthentic and pretending to be who you're not. Now, deep down, was that who he is? Is he the guy that cheats? Is he the guy that does all these things? No, that's not the real him. That was the mask. That was the inauthentic version of him. But then it became even more inauthentic when he didn't come clean because now he has to masquerade around and keep pretending that he's this good person that would never do something like that because he stuffed the secret deep down, which diminishes his light. So how can he give the full expression of who he is to the world when he's buried this secret? So I'd like you guys to put in the chat, comment below, where are you being inauthentic and pretending? Where are you not showing up as the real you? Is it in your marriage? Are you being the leader? Are you championing your wife? Are you building her up? Are you tearing her down? Where are you being inauthentic? Is it at work? Are you being the pleaser? Is it with your friends, always doing the favors for everybody and disrespecting yourself, not respecting your own time and your own boundaries? 
Are you steamrolling, gaslighting? Where are you being inauthentic and pretending to be somebody that you're really not? This takes courage to have this level of self-reflection. So comment below, smash up the like key to help us please with the algorithms so that more people can have the opportunity to share in our content and support our fellow brothers in rising and having more passion and more power and more purpose in their life. That would mean a lot if you can do that for other men. You're not doing it for me, please do it for them. If you're finding value in what I'm sharing with you and you feel that you know someone that could benefit from this, share it. Share it with your community so that we can all grow together. So that was what I wanted to discuss with you guys today relative to really taking a look at where in our life are we being inauthentic and pretending to be somebody that we're not. Now, let's transition over to getting a few questions answered that were submitted in our private Facebook group. We have a couple of Facebook groups. One of them is for the general public. Uh, it's a totally free resource for you guys to join and get supported and see all sorts of cool videos and, and get some support from some of my coaches. And then we have in one of our coaching programs, which is called Firestarter, which is a coaching program where you make an investment to be a part of that program. We also have a private group there. And so we get questions that are submitted within our public forum. Uh, even though it's a private group, uh, we get uh, questions that are submitted there. And I come on here and I like to answer the questions so that we can all grow together. So I'm going to read off the first question and we'll dive in. Here we go. Here we go. This gentleman writes, I love your teachings. I attended a Man on Fire immersion and it has changed my life for the better. I have grown and learned to be a masculine leader for my queen and for the family. My queen is the captain of her own pirate ship. She loses her direction when her stress level is high. She's trying to finish her doctorate while having a full-time job and her parents live one hour away. Her dad has dementia and her mom just got a pacemaker. I help with her parents a lot and I try to support her in any way I can. How can I help her pilot her ship? and counter the negative energy and help her regain confidence or beat the gravity? How can I help her remember who she truly is when she forgets? Okay, beautiful, beautiful question for us to all learn together. And for people that are hearing me for the first time or that are relatively new to some of the Man on Fire social platforms where you're being exposed to our content, videos or podcasts, things of this nature, please know that uh, I'm not here really to offer advice. Uh, I can share with you my own personal experience and journey uh, through life. I can share with you what I've witnessed in other men and, and through supporting and helping other men along with my team, helping them. And I'm really here to help you find a deeper level of truth. So if I had it my way, when these questions are submitted, really, in the future, maybe we'll even do this, I'll have you come online with me live where I can ask you more questions. And in asking you more questions, I can pull more truth out of you. And ultimately, it's really what I'm committed to is helping you find the answer to your questions. Because there's power in you discovering the truth. Now, one of my gifts, though, is that I am able to offer men different perspectives that might challenge them a little bit to think outside of the box to think in a way that you wouldn't normally think and to stretch you into a place where you're not comfortable because that's where your growth begins. We've all heard that. Your growth begins at the end of your comfort zone. So I will challenge you guys to think a little bit outside the box, but I'll preface by saying it's not that my perspective is right. My perspective is a perspective and your perspective is a perspective. They're all just perspectives and all of us are right. Every single one of us in how we see it is right. However, not all of these perspectives sit at the same vibrational range, sit at the same frequency, meaning it's only right within the range of consciousness that it resides. And as you grow and as you evolve, 
you recognize that you see different truths that you couldn't previously see. It's like climbing to a higher top of a mountain. Oh my God, I didn't know that all this existed. And now you think you see it all. No, then somebody climbs higher than where you are. And then higher and higher and higher. This is called evolution. This is called growing in your consciousness. So the idea is to take on the courageous journey as a man of growing yourself where your consciousness evolves and you can now see things that you couldn't previously see and then this new level of truth you start to grow the capacity to take on new actions that are fueled by your heart that allow you to operate from a greater place of authenticity and congruence and alignment to the real version of you so within this gentleman's share there's a few things that I'd, I'd love to share with you guys number one the question is, when your wife, when your partner, when your significant other goes into her forgetting, goes into a place of anxiety or anger or rage or fear or being snappy or cold, the question for you to consider is, what happens to you? And more often than not, what happens to a man is that he loses his center. He loses his roots and somehow he will personalize what she's going through and think that it's his fault or that it's his responsibility to make it different and make her change. And most men, most, can't be happy or feel ease within their own physiology until she feels happy, she feels ease, she's okay. And really now it's no longer about her, it's about you and the comfort you have in your own body. So the question is, can you as a man, and this is what we teach the men at our four-day immersion and in our different coaching programs, can you as a man get to a place where you are so centered, you are so grounded, you are so in the space of being imperturbable in the knowingness of who you are, unwavering, totally connected to your intuitive knowing, dialed into source, living from your heart. Can you get to a place that no matter what is going on, external to you and in this case it's your partner your wife no matter what's going on in her world and what's going on with her emotions can you maintain your center and most men if they were honest they'd say no i lose it and most of you are like, i just wanted to be happy i just wanted to be happy no you just want her to be happy so that you can be happy so that you can have ease now it's no longer about her so number one is what happens to you do you lose your center number two do you make it about her or do you make it about yourself? Why do you want her to be at ease, be at peace? Why do you want her to have more confidence or be gravity? Is it because I love her so much and she deserves that? Or is it so that I could have more peace, I could have more ease, right? And I'm not assuming that that's what it's about for this particular man. In fact, I know him and I'd say it's probably not because he came to one of our four-day immersions, so I understand the depth of the inquiry that he's asking here. So the other thing that we have to be present to is that we're not here to fix our partner. They're not broken. We're not here to change them. What are we here for? We're here to shine our light as powerfully as we possibly can shine it. We are here to become the lighthouse. We are here to come home to the portal of remembrance of who we are as a man. And in owning our light, we all know a candle is not meant to illuminate itself. We all know that a lighthouse doesn't shine its light for itself. It shines its light so that lost ships can find its way back to land. And a candle is meant to illuminate its light for others so others can see. And as a man, we are here to illuminate our light, to light our light, so others can find their own light. So the only thing that the man can truly do is grow himself and shine his light more bright so that when your partner goes into the forgetting of who she is, you don't go into the forgetting of who you are because if you're both in the forgetting, you're both operating from a place of fear, from a place of vigilance where your nervous system is in a sympathetic response, so there's fight, 
There's flight, you run away, you retreat rather than face or you freeze. And that's how most men handle stuff. And, you know, and we bring them into the man on fire world, the man on fire brotherhood. You come to one of our four day immersions and you learn, you learn how to confront, not be confrontational. You learn how to confront. How do you face what's in front of you? How do you not lose your center? Because if you both lose your center at the same time, it's called separation or divorce. So the only role of you as the man is in those moments is love her back into the remembrance of who she is without trying to change her. Just shine your light. And it's not about her needing to change her mood because whether my wife is happy, sad, angry, frustrated, down on herself, feeling the presence of God, it's all the same to me because my joy, my happiness, is not connected externally. It's not externally sourced. I am not going to change who I'm being based on somebody else's moods. This takes tremendous amount of work and courage to cut the cords of codependency and neediness where you're externally sourcing your happiness. This takes work. Not every guy wants to do the work. Not every guy is hungry enough. Most of us say, admittedly, we'd like a different life, but most of us are not willing to actually put in the work and do something about it or ask for help, right? Because Man on Fire is all about offering you support, then challenging your ass, holding you to the fire of how extraordinary you are and holding you accountable to your true potential. That's what our programs are about. So for those of you that want to explore our different coaching programs, which yes, they involve an investment. And if you're ready to invest in yourself monetarily, you're ready to invest in time, in your energetic resources, you're ready for that level of commitment because you're hungry and you want to grow, then go to our site, manonfirerising.com and click on one of the links that says apply for a discovery call where you can apply to fill out an application to see if you're eligible to have a conversation with one of our coaches to see if we are the right fit. Will it be the next best step for you in your life moving forward to possibly join one of our coaching programs? And as you're feeling into our programs, we're discovering whether or not we believe you're the right fit at this time for us. And that's done with an immense amount of respect. And if we don't feel that you are, we'll politely share that with you. And with your permission, we'll offer you a suggestion of what we think would support. So this is what I'm saying. There's a huge gap between a man who says he wants to grow and a man who's actually willing to grow and put in the work. Huge gap. You know, reading books and, and listening to podcasts and watching all sorts of stuff on YouTube, that's all great. But if you're not down on the battlefield and if you don't have somebody supporting you and challenging you and holding you accountable, at least my experience as a 54-year-old man is chances are you're not really changing. You're just gathering information. And it looks good on paper, but the reality is if your life is not reflecting it, then the truth is you're not living it. And this was me. This was me up until age 40. You know, my whole life had to fall apart in order for me to become more authentic and stop with the nonsense, stop with the BS, take a real look in the mirror and be okay and honest about, I'm not liking who I'm seeing looking back at me. This is where it began for me. And so we're helping so many men be able to go from seeing that fraud, seeing that fake and phony in the mirror, to all of a sudden being able to say, I love you. And seeing a smile back in the mirror. That, that takes work, that takes courage. And we are proud at Man on Fire to be able to support men in coming to that place where you can regain a self-respect and a self-love and now you can bring a more congruent version of you to the world, especially to your significant other. So to answer this man's question, and because I also know him, he's extraordinary. What I would offer to consider is while she's going into these different states where you feel that she's forgetting who she is and she's going into the negative energy or she's losing her confidence and she's getting all stressed out. Hold the space of seeing her as who she really is. 
don't get pulled into the drama of what she's going through. Maintain your center. Speak truth with conviction and with an open heart. Don't allow what she's going through to knock you off of your roots and off of your center. And in that beautiful, humble smile and the glow and the radiance and the light that you're giving off, she will quickly, because energy always wins, she will quickly come back to her light. And you know that when two women live together, one of them will change their menstrual cycle according to the other. Well, the one with the strongest rhythm wins. So you as the man, be the stronger rhythm in the household of remembrance, living from your heart, living connected to source, to God. You hold that space, you hold that energy, you be the master and the lead in trainer, the nodal point of the family where she can find her way back to the light. Now, to go a little bit deeper, might there be a conversation that's required to bring to her awareness what you're observing? Absolutely. Should you do it at that moment where she's in her hot mess? No, most likely no. In those moments, just support her where she's at. Meet her where she's at. Celebrate where she's at. Don't see it as wrong. Just support her for where she's at. It's like when somebody's at a funeral, they just lost a loved one. Meet them where they're at. Don't try to pull them into the spiritual meaning of what's happening. Meet them in their suffering. So meet her there, meaning just hold space for where she's at. And when that passes, you can, of course, have a deeper conversation. And you can say, I love you. Right? It's not, not about my words. I'm just giving you a hypothetical example. You can just bring to her awareness, hey, they're, they're, you appear to be overwhelmed at times, overstressed. I'd love to help. Would you like my help? Would you like my support? Are you aware that this is happening? And you can go into the inquiry, but from your heart, not where she feels judged. And if she feels seen by you and not judged by you, she'll open up deeper and she'll reveal more to you. And if she's ready for support, if she's ready for help, great. Then you'll offer it. And, and you know, because most guys want to fix it. They want to fix it. Women don't want to be fixed. They just want to be heard. One of my greatest breakthroughs ever with my wife, she spoke for like an hour and 20 minutes and all I did was listen. And, and along the way, a couple of times, my mind wanted to interject because I had the answer or I had the solution. And, and then I told my mind, please shut up. It's not about fixing this. Just hold space for your wife. Hold space. And so for an hour and 20 minutes, I just maintained rapport with her, eye contact, nodding when, when I could really acknowledge what I'm feeling and hearing what she's sharing. And she felt totally seen and totally heard. She cried it all the way through. And she thanked me like immensely, like I was her hero, I was her king. Thank you. I feel so much better now. And you know, of course the man's like, but I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. What are you thanking me for? You did more than you could possibly imagine. You didn't try to fix her. You just listened. And you allowed her to find her way back to the light. And that's what I mean, that we have that ability as men. Less is more, listening. Listening beyond the listening, listening to what's not being said, sensing the energy, extrapolating information from the field. What the hell is David talking about? I'm talking about the informational field that exists around us that wants to give us information. And at Man on Fire, we're teaching men how to extrapolate, how to gather, pull in the input, the information that's always available to us. Some people might call it intuition, right? Lots of different words. Intuitive knowing, source, soul, spirit, God. Okay, what are you hearing, guys? Put it in your chat below, comment. What, what did you just get from this first share of the first question that was asked? What did you hear? What did you see? What did you learn? What did you take away? Are you feeling me? Are you hearing me? Are you seeing me? Is this landing for you? Is it resonating for you? Throw me some fire signs. Smash up that like key. Put the comments. Share this with other men. Let's support each other in rising, rising with more passion, more power, and more purpose. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Let's address another question. This gentleman writes... 
I went through Man on Fire partially a couple of years ago. Now, you know, as soon as I read that first sentence, that in and of itself tells me a lot, partially. What does that mean to you guys? What does it mean to you when you hear partially? Okay. So he went through Man on Fire partially a couple of years ago. By the way, he did not come to our four-day immersion. That's not what he's talking about. It helped me get my balls back. My marriage ended in divorce, but was mutual, and we parted on good terms. Since then, I met someone, and we have been dating for almost a year now. There is an age gap. I'm 44, and she's 27, and we are really doing great. She has guy friends, which I personally don't mind. Yes, you do. As I have female friends as well. But then there are some stragglers that pop up now and then that I ask about. She says they are just old friends. But if I ask for more details, she gets defensive and wants to fight. I remain present and calm as she flips out saying I'm trying to control her. I'm just curious if these people are a positive influence or if they were reasons for old bad habits. I get to wondering how I got back to even asking myself these questions. So I'm back again and once I have the money, I'll go through this program. Remind me to speak to that guys. Once I then I'll is the sentence of death in a man. In fact, I will give a whole talk on that. Once I, then I'll. Sentence of death for a man. You are fooling yourselves into thinking, once I have this, then I'll do that. And the way it works for a man is, no, do it. Find a way to do it. Stop waiting for that someday. Stop future projecting. Stop putting it off to this magical day called someday. Because most of you wake up in your 50s, 60s, and 70s and you realize, I never got to the things I said I was going to do. Because you fooled yourself into thinking that you were going to do it, just like you fool yourself into thinking you're going to the gym starting tomorrow, but you don't get up when the alarm clock goes off, do you? No. You let the pirates take over. So that is the sentence of death. Now, is it possible that once he gets the money, he's going to do the program? Yeah, of course it's possible. It happens. But this is a habit that he needs to look at in his own life of where am I defaulting to putting something off that I know could promote my growth as a man and I'm putting it off because I am using money as a reason why I can't do it. And some of you are wondering, well, well what if he really doesn't have the money? Then, then isn't that a legitimate justification as to why he can't do it? So forget man on fire for a second, just in general. No, it's not a reasonable justification. It's an excuse. Because if that man had a dog that needed surgery paid in cash, he's coming up with the money. If that man had a child that needed surgery and the insurance didn't cover it, he's coming up with the money. So it's not about the money. It's about lack of resourcefulness. And it's the lack of resourcefulness is due to lack of value. And the lack of value is not an, a, pro, a program, whether it's Man on Fire or something else, it's in yourself. You're not valuing yourself enough for the changes that you can make, how you can transform as a man and being and bringing this new version of you to the world. You're not valuing that. You, you value other things. You value, yes, you value your children. Yes, you value your dog. I would do anything for anybody else. Yeah, but the greatest thing you could do for anybody else is bring the real version of you to them. Don't be the martyr. Grow yourself and bring that version of you to the world. So we as men, including I did this for over 40 years, hide behind it. I'll do it once I have the money. Well, let me tell you something. My greatest growth as a man came from coming up with the money when I didn't have it. I'll say that again. My greatest growth as a man came from coming up with the money when I didn't have it because I had a big enough why. That's a side note. Now I don't have to talk about it in the future. We just addressed it now. Bam! All right, now. The last thing he writes here is, this is a woman I want to marry but there has to be boundaries, right? Question mark. How do I handle this? Okay. Number one, thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable and visible and sharing, sharing this in our private Facebook group. I said earlier public, what I meant was we have a group that is free, but it's a private Facebook group. 
and within that forum, men submit questions and I address the questions. We also have in one of our coaching programs a Facebook group, but in that coaching program, the men paid to be a part of that coaching program. So, with that said, how can I support this man? Here's what I would say. I would say, first of all, let's recognize that relationships are the most complex thing in the world for a man and a woman to enter into. And relationships serve as such a beautiful, sacred mirror, a sacred mirror for us to look at the parts of ourselves that are requiring healing. And we talk about the first pillar of being a man on fire is to be able to see our game. You have to recognize, and your relationship will bring you to this point, if you're not in a space of naming, blaming, shaming, judging, and projecting, which many of us fall into, it's so much easier to see the faults, inadequacies of my partner. 10 times harder to look in the mirror and recognize any judgment I have towards her, anything I don't like about her, I'm really just talking about myself. So many of you would love to argue with that, but I can promise you that in your own, desire, in your own quest of spiritual growth, you will humorously come back to a place where you recognize there's truth in what I just shared, that anything you dislike about somebody else is simply a part of you that you haven't taken ownership of. So you have charges and you have polarities. I spoke about this. Go back and search for the video that I did on this. That people don't trigger you, they trigger your triggers. Now, with that said, what would I, what would I suggest to this gentleman? I would say to... First of all, look at the energy of what you brought to the conversation when you approached her in asking about these stragglers, these other men that randomly pop up. What energy did you bring? Was it a humble curiosity? Was it caring, loving, concerning? Was it accusatory? Were you being forceful? Was your heart open? Were you in a space of not trusting what was your energy meaning what did your body language reveal what did your facial expressions reveal here's what came out of your mouth but what were you really saying and it's also important that you look at what were you saying under your breath you know because what you say to yourself transmutes and transmits through the field through the space between you and her and lands on her and so you already said what you were really thinking before it came out of your mouth so likely, likely, what she heard was, I don't trust you. I don't trust you, or I don't know if I can trust you. And so then something else comes out of your mouth. Hey babe, like who are these guys, right? And you gotta recognize that you already asked her the question before you asked her the question. And then what was your demeanor? What was your energy? What was your vibe? What were you giving off? So that set the energetic tone for how the conversation was gonna go. Now you as the man need to set the container, need to set the structure, that's what men do, right? So we are the ice skating rink and the woman is the skater. She gets to show everything she can do but in doing all these tricks, but we're just the container, the masculine container holding pre, uh, space and presence. We are, the, we are the structure for her to thrive and be in the fullness of her feminine glory and radiance. So what are some ways that you could approach this? Is you need to look at well, what what is what are you really what are you really saying to her? Is hey, and this uh, and this is possible. I'm not saying that this is a fact, but it's very possible that there are parts of you that don't fully trust her. There are parts of you that feel she's still young. She's still immature to the world. She's still giving off energy of being available. You still maybe doubt how would she conduct herself in a bar with her girlfriends? Would she be giving off the energy of I'm taken, I'm engaged or I'm married, um, I, I have a guy that lives here, so does she have energetic boundaries? Is she still trying to get a hit off of men through flirting because she hasn't dealt with her own feelings of unworthiness, which is likely the case at age 27? So really what is most likely coming up for you is you don't trust that you can fully trust her. You don't trust that you can fully trust her yet. And that's your truth and that's okay. 
if that's the case. And the thing is, you can't abandon your own truth. You can't abandon your own knowingness, right? Like when I was a, a senior in high school, I had a girlfriend and I knew that she ultimately would cheat. Now, truth be told, I knew that I would as well. But I knew that she would. And eventually she did. And I didn't look at it as an act of betrayal. How could she do this to me? I knew it. No, I looked at it as why did I betray myself? Why did I get with her when I knew that she was going to do that? I betrayed myself. I can't be mad at her. Even if she said, I promise I won't cheat. I know you're sensitive to that, right? No. Like, where are you abandoning your own knowing and then holding her in a box, holding her in a space, in a structure that you know is against what you know to be the truth? So she might not be at the same emotional depth and the same level as you at this stage of the age discrepancy. She might be. But also you could look at, well, what is she mirroring back for you that you need to look at where maybe she is trustworthy and maybe you are being overly overbearing and over controlling. Maybe you are trying to control everything. Maybe you didn't engage in more mature conversations with her, a greater level of leadership. Maybe you didn't approach it in a way where you said, listen, I'm in full trust of, of how you operate and how you conduct yourself and how you speak with other men, but that's not going to stop me from caring and it's not going to stop me from wanting to protect you. And if I sense that somebody's reaching out to you and, and, the, and the energy behind this person is you know, um, not... Um, honoring you as a woman and where you're at in your own in your own development and where we're at as partnership i'm going to want to interject i'm going to want to protect you but you, you have to filter out all of your own inadequacies and your need and desire for control so there's a lot to look at here and if i had you with me i would ask you lots of questions to help you get to a deeper level of truth but i'm going to trust right now that we explored enough for you to really get present to what you need to look at so i believe it really all starts with having a deep, um, deeply penetrating, honest conversation with her where she doesn't feel attacked and you're coming from your heart, you're also coming from your power. You lay out the greater vision of what you want to create with her and you let her know that, that you have some concerns and you just talk it through with her. Talk it through with her. All right, put some comments below guys. What are you hearing in this last question that was asked and how I addressed some suggestions for this particular gentleman? What are you hearing? And then we have one last question that I'm going to get to. What's the aha? What's the takeaway that you got from this? Let's get to the last question. Here we go. Last question. This gentleman writes, I currently don't have a partner. I want to move forward, start dating and find my queen, but I'm dealing with having ended a relationship with a narcissist one month ago. I felt fast and hard for her. She was everything I wanted. Then I slowly and unwittingly became her victim. That comes with a great deal of shame for a man and the self-doubt instilled in me by a maniacal, manipulative woman will not help any future relationship. I still wonder if it really could have been all my fault. I've apologized for things I didn't do and begged for forgiveness, truly believing I created the problem. Nothing was ever good enough and I allowed myself to be treated poorly only to accept that I brought it on myself. You see where the shame comes from. I refuse to date now. How do I rise above this and become the man I used to be or better? Okay. Beautiful, 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 beautiful question. Very vulnerable. And, and that, is, that is where our power is, guys, as a man, is in the depth of our vulnerability. So thank you for being vulnerable with us and sharing this question. So uh, let me be succinct and let me offer some reflections on this. All of our shit is going to come up in relationships. All of our inadequacies are going to be mirrored back to us in a relationship. All the stuff that we haven't dealt with yet in our life is going to come up in our relationship. Now, for example, my wife and I, I'm not looking for her to complete me. She's not looking to me, for me to complete her. This is not a Jerry Maguire thing, you complete me. It's not about that. We both recognize that we are going to be mirrors for one another to reflect back to our, ourselves the parts of us that are requiring growth. And we have chosen consciously to enter into this relationship where we are gonna choose love and empathy and compassion rather than judgment. And we're gonna hold space for one another to do individual healing and the relationship will be a portal back to the remembrance of who we are and a portal to God. That's our contract. We set that container, we set that tone, that's choice. 
Just like a relationship to you or marriage to you, you have choice what you make it mean. There's what you made it mean because you borrowed that from somebody else. Maybe what you witnessed with your parents or what the church tells you or the temple tells you. But the truth is you get to create your own life. You get to create what does it mean for you. So what I'm really hearing within this gentleman's share is he still has a lot of codependency. He still has a lot of um, desperation. He still has a lot of attachment to things external to him to source his own barometer of whether or not he's worthy. And so there's a neediness there. And that tells me that he hasn't done enough work yet on himself at this stage of his life to really be able to cut that cord of codependency and really come back to a place of center where he's aware of his own boundaries and he would have ended a relationship way sooner. And he would have caught himself in the patterns of where he was being a pleaser or where he was getting walked all over and he was perpetuating her wound and he was allowing his wound to get activated and both of them were in the forgetting of who they are. Now, we can go to the big eye TR and we could and we could borrow what he's taught, which is this man's future in relationships has nothing to do with his past. Your destiny is not in relationship to your history. No, your future and the destiny that awaits you is in your decisions that you're willing to make today. And we could say, oh, but I'm so scarred by the past and all these things happened. How am I supposed to how am I supposed to all of a sudden have this great life? Well, you have to decide that that's what you're committed to. And then you have to be willing to put in the work. So for this man, for any other man, my suggestion will always be consistent and will be the same. Ask for support. Allow yourself to be challenged and allow yourself to be held accountable. Trying to do it on your own, maybe you'll get there, but I promise you, you'll have taken a path where you have thrown away the greatest commodity in the world, which is called time. Don't be one of those people. Be humble enough to ask for help. Ask for support. It doesn't mean you're helpless. It means that you're becoming empowered by being vulnerable enough to say, hey, I don't have this all figured out by myself. Can you help me? The best of the best all had support. Whether it's a Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan, coaches, mentors, teachers, guides, we all have it. So ask for support. Immerse yourself in a culture, in a community like Man on Fire or something else that maybe you resonate with or if you resonate with us, great. Then go to our website, manonfirerising.com and apply for a discovery call with one of our coaches to see if one of our coaching programs is right for you. And then, if it is, we're gonna challenge your ass. We're gonna hold you accountable to the real you. We're gonna push you and stretch you and get you uncomfortable because that's where all your growth is. I'm going to give you talk therapy where you get to talk about this crap. Action. And help rebuild you into the man that you truly are. And so there's no race to get there. It's going to take work. It's going to take commitment. It's going to take your courage. But you also have to have hunger that you want this. And like I said earlier, most men say they want a different life. I want to change. I want to be a different person. But most men aren't willing to do the work. If you're the guy that's ready to do the work, listening to me right now, you're ready to get vulnerable, you're ready to get visible, you're ready to ask for support, you're ready to be challenged and held accountable to the true potential of who God made you to be, and you want to explore if one of our Man on Fire coaching programs is right for you, is the next best step for whatever you need support with, whether it's your marriage, your finances, your mission and purpose, your career path, your health, Go to our website, manonfirerising.com, click on the link that says apply for a discovery call and you'll, if you're approved, get to speak to one of our coaches and together the two of you can discover whether or not we are the next best step for you. We will know, you will know, and if it's a fit, we'll match you up with the right program. As always, guys, honor and a privilege to be here with you today. Love sharing with you, love receiving your feedback. Love when you submit questions. We're all in this together to support each other in rising with more passion, more power, and more purpose so we can live into our true potential as the most congruent, coherent, aligned version of ourselves that God created us to be. So much love to you guys. 
and I'll see you on the next either Facebook Live, YouTube, Instagram, podcast, or LinkedIn. We'll see you soon. So much love to you guys. Bye for now. Put your final comments below. What's your greatest takeaway from today? What is your greatest takeaway from today? All right, guys. Bye for now.